Jesus Christ. is the sound and the sight of firefighters losing ground in the suburbs of Los Angeles. Water! The notorious Santa Ana winds turning this fire into a blowtorch before sunrise in Corona. It's scary. It's really scary. It makes your heart stop. It freaks you out just knowing that it's so close. 1,500 people in a scramble to escape the flames quickly closing in. 500 homes in the path of the fire, freeways and roads leading to safety, surrounded by the blaze. Known as the Canyon Fire, 25 mile an hour winds whip through these dry hills, funneling the flames like a river towards homes. A nonstop air attack, helicopters using night vision soaring into neighborhoods. With Southern California now beginning Santa Ana wind season, the most dangerous weeks are ahead. But the fire season has already cost a record $2 billion. And now the firefight is getting more dangerous here every day and every night. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Los Angeles. I'm getting drenched in the water. Look at this. It's fucking awful. All of the cars, everything's gone.
En Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, las intensas lluvias dejaron ya varias vialidades inundadas, además que más de 100 vehículos pues quedaron sencillamente varados entre las aguas. Las precipitaciones que iniciaron con gran intensidad desde el lunes a inicios de esta semana han dejado ya 19 colonias con inundaciones, 47 personas han sido rescatadas por protección civil. El nivel de Río Bravo se encuentra en cuatro y medio metros de profundidad o de altura, por lo que el bulevar Luis Donaldo Colosio fue cerrado ya en ambos sentidos por posible desbordamiento del río. Las principales vialidades como Reforma y 15 de septiembre, Reforma y Fidel Velázquez, Avenida César López de Lara y Perú, entre otros cruceros importantes, también están afectados. Por esto fueron suspendidas las clases en todos los niveles educativos allí en Nuevo Laredo. Caos se vivió en el estado de Nuevo León tras las torrenciales lluvias que se intensificaron durante las primeras horas de hoy. Los municipios más afectados fueron Monterrey, Apodaca, Suazua, Pesquería, Juárez, Escobedo y Cadereyta. Las autoridades informaron que se esperan más lluvias durante las próximas horas. El gobierno de Tamaulipas se declaró en alerta por las lluvias que ocasionaron inundaciones en varios sectores de Nuevo Laredo. Esta mañana, el río Bravo se desbordó parcialmente a la altura de los puentes internacionales 1 y 2 que conectan con Laredo, Texas. Hay dos carros que se están, se los va a llevar la corriente, aquí en Home Center, está lloviendo duro, está el arroyo peor que ayer. Esta es la acabación del mundo, niña, esta es la acabación del mundo.
estamos. Ey, ahora entramos a las 7. De hecho, el man del camión, Mari, que dice, se va el camión, me voy yo también. Entrega la merca. Ese. Oye, está amarrado, va. Sí, tiene que ser que está cogiendo. Sí, tiene un arnés. No se puede bajar. No, no, pero no lo ha movido de ahí. Pero no lo ha movido, no lo ha movido. Eso pesa, ese tiene que llevar buen peso atrás. Ah, y van a entrar por acá. Omar, ¿Ah? el que trae la varilla. Ey, sí, pero ven acá, culo de hueva, ¿por qué no metió el camión? Ah, pero yo te digo una vaina, ese man tuvo para entrar ahorita. Será que lo sacó? Aquí estamos en la zona del mercado oriental de Seca, cada vez cuando llueve solo dos horas. Solo dos horas. Parece el diluvio. Este es del Cine México dos cuadras abajo, propiamente dos cuadras abajo del Cine México.
No es un huracán lo que provocó todo este desastre. Fueron apenas 20 minutos de lluvia que dejó algunas arterias viales de la capital convertidas en piscinas de agua sucia y basura. Por ejemplo, esta que conecta la rotonda del Huehuense con los semáforos del antiguo hospital militar. Los bomberos reportaron 25 rescates de esta cantidad. 13 estaban a bordo de este bus. Esperando que tengan a salvar. Eso espero porque no quiero morir todavía. Amigos y amigas, estoy pasando un momento muy difícil, me encuentro en... Radio... En esta avenida, la de Radio Mujer, prácticamente se convirtió en un río que llevó a su paso carros ahí estacionados. La alcaldía de Managua dice que 50 vehículos están en esta misma situación. Una buena parte están en el sótano del moderno hospital militar. Increíble, mi auto ha tenido que recorrerse, no sé si voy a recuperar mi auto, pero les puedo decir que esto es lamentable. Justamente... El tiempo pasó, pero los estragos eran evidentes. En algunas viviendas del barrio Jonathan González, la emergencia los dejó con pérdidas económicas. ¿Qué, qué, qué electrodomésticos, mesa, qué fue lo que, lo, que, lo que se le echó a perder ahorita, doña? Juegale. Ya.
Okay, folks, here is um, in Cantaro village, you know, around by Riverside Gardens and Hangman Trace, so I sound know it, or Conrad Street. Water, water, water. This is Hangman Conrad Street, sorry. Marvel River overflow. Look at this. One hour of rain. And look at the problem. Right now. Nobody could move. Approaching Dominica from the shoreline, the first signs of a battered country. Onshore at the port, the picture is clearer. Crews frantically unload water, some of the first aid to reach the island all week. But as we'll find out later, it's not nearly enough. A group of Dominicans who live abroad have reached the island to rescue family members, bring in supplies, and they get a first glimpse of a homeland in ruins. I love this country. I, you know, I, it's devastating for me, but... He at least knows his family is alive, but not everyone is so lucky. Destroy the country. I lost, I lost my, my nieces, my brothers in Martinique, critical condition. I haven't seen my daughter. It's rough, man. It's rough. I, I don't know what to say. With both airports shut down, people crowd the gates at the port to try to get on one of the few ships evacuating people out. And this is why, in this neighborhood near the capital, everything is gone. Schools, homes, roads, it's all badly damaged, some beyond repair. The people of this island nation of 71,000 are desperate, some still in shock. Lord have mercy. It came back with a vengeance. The hurricane destroyed the power lines. There's been no electricity for a week. Supermarkets are flattened, leaving little food. This 78-year-old man hadn't eaten in days. Well, no, so I'm trying to ask a lady to give me something to eat if she has. Surviving otherwise, no. No shop, nothing to get anything. The people went to looting and they took away everything from the shops and sh stores. Aid operations are still in the early phases. But it's clear Dominica will need the world's help to rebuild. Not for days, not months, but for years. But that can wait. Water can't. Here they're thirsty, and in this neighborhood, bottled water finally arrives. Given the nature of the destruction, it's almost like the country of Dominica no longer exists. And in some ways, it doesn't. Once a small but vibrant island nation, buzzing with art, culture, music, and life, all of that is now gone. The entire country has been reduced 
to a debris field. The heart of any country is not its buildings or roads, and in Dominica, their will is being tested in ways no people should ever have to endure, but will is all they have left. Gabriel Osando, Al Jazeera, Dominica. In the central mountains of Puerto Rico, Naranjito was one of the worst hit areas by Hurricane Maria. The eye of the storm passed right through this part of the island. Brenda Cosme says she cannot help but cry when she thinks of everything she's lost. I cry for what happened, for what we lost. But Brenda is not alone. Many here are struggling to recover from the hurricane. People tell us that this area used to be filled with green trees, but as you can see, there's not many left. In fact, many of the houses in this area were completely blown away. This, for example, is the only standing wall left from this house. Recovery efforts are underway all around the island. The electricity grid was destroyed, so the island is currently dependent on generators. The hurricane was so strong that it destroyed the old posts, the new posts, nothing survived. We are all doing what we can to get the island moving again. At the town's shelter, there are more than a hundred people left homeless. They have lost everything they own. The city's mayor has played a crucial role in organizing relief efforts. Private donations are pouring in, but more is still needed. What we desperately need is water to continue providing people here with what they need. We have some food, clothes for them, and now we need to see how we help them to get their lives back together. Puerto Rico was struggling before two consecutive storms hit the island, heavily in debt, with high levels of poverty. Local authorities say they need help. Because we have 3.5 million of American citizens in needs right now. So we will need a lot of help of the federal government uh, to recover Puerto Rico, and this will take years uh, to be in the position we were before. Recovery efforts will probably take months. People like Brenda Cosme say they're bracing themselves for a long struggle. Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera, Naranjito, Puerto Rico. Sixteen people have been confirmed dead and scores missing following a landslide that hit the western district of Rubanda. The death toll is expected to rise and as CGTN's Hilary Ayesaga reports, the search for the missing continues in earnest.
Efforts are underway to retrieve the bodies of the missing people. Eyewitnesses say the victims were swept away by flood waters. Several people have been left homeless and property destroyed. Uganda's Disaster and Relief Ministry is urging locals to relocate from landslide prone areas. The region is experiencing above normal rains. The incident follows another landslide in the eastern district of Sironko weeks ago that left one person dead and others missing. In March 2010, several landslides occurred in the Mount Elgon Ranges bordering Kenya, killing over 200 people and also displaced thousands. Hilara Isiga, CGTN. Kampala.
Η σφοδρή βροχόπτωση παρέλυσε τη Σαμοθράκη. Τύχη του Δημαρχείου κατέρευσαν, το κέντρο υγεία πλημμύρισε και πολλοί δρόμοι μετατράπηκαν σε χυμάρου. Οι αρχέ κήρυξαν το νησί σε κατάσταση έκτακτη ανάγκη. Τα ορμητικά νερά παρέσυραν στο πέρασμά του δεκάδε αυτοκίνητα. Το νότιο τμήμα τη Αμοθράκη, προσλάκωμα και προφιτιλία, αποκόπηκε καθώ πλημμύρισε η γέφυρα του ξηροποτάμου. Αρκετέ περιοχέ συνεχίζουν να μην έχουν νερό λόγω προβλημάτων και στο δίκτυο ύδρευση. Οι μετακινήσει στο νησί είναι πολύ δύσκολε λόγω των εκτεταμένων καταστροφών στο οδικό δίκτυο. Δυνάμει τη πυροσβεστική του στρατού και τη περιφέρεια μετέβησαν στη Σαμοθράκη προκειμένου να συνδράμουν στην αποκατάσταση των πρωτοφανών για το νησί καταστροφών. Ο Υπουργό Υποδομών Χρήστο Σπίτζη, που επισκέφθηκε τι πληγήσει περιοχέ, ανακοίνωσε την άμεση εφαρμογή σχεδίου αντιμετώπιση του χρόνιου προβλήματο τη έλλειψη αντιπλημμυρικού σχεδιασμού. Deniz yok olmuş bakar mısınız? Sadece somur. Buralar böyle. Çok kötü. Allah'ım sen koru bizi.
Baba. Efendim. Ola dünya gitti. Eyvah. Ola beri gel hafız beri. Hafız beri gel. Maliye gitti. Evde gitti. Evde gitti. Evde gitti. Ola gelin gerisi de hafız. Ama yine kebine kebine gitti hafız. Ama beni gel. O gitti, kutuna gitti. Beni ki gitti. Git çıkmışlar, o tek tarafı da. Why you doing to me? I know what I know.
主要是个东里河的河水倒灌，是吗？是吧？开着去就是就是大井镇最年轻，渔民家住在那里。鱼是早上七点过十几分的时间，下午一点多钟就停了。